Welcome back guys, this is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I want to talk to you about encryption. Oh no, uh -uh, you can't do encryption on ham radio. Mm -mm. Yeah, I know that honey. It, we're not going to be sending anything out over the air that's encrypted. Oh. What we're going to do, remember a couple of weeks ago I was telling you about maybe we want to store some documents on the Pi in case of an emergency that we might need. Maybe their yep. driver's license or passport. Yep. Well, we don't want that sitting out there just in the open so anybody could click on it. Hmm. We need to encrypt that to mitigate the security risk. Hmm. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Okay guys, so let's take a look at getting this installed. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and open up uh, your terminal window so that it is ready to go. I'm going to resize that just a little bit. Now let's head over to the GitHub site and that is github.com forward slash km4ack. And we're going to be looking for this PyScripts repository. Now, if you don't see it here on the front page, you can always click the repositories up here at the top and access it that way. We'll go ahead and click on PyScripts. I'm going to scroll down the page until I find security tools. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And this next step is critical. Come down the page just a little bit until you find this raw button and go ahead and click on the raw button. Then come up to your uh, address bar here at the top and highlight that and let's copy it. Now we can go ahead and head back over to the Pi. I'm going to move to the downloads directory with CD space downloads. And then I'm going to use my wget command and I'll paste in that link that we just copied. Let's go ahead and press return and it takes it just a quick second to download. Now let me get that screen cleared out. I'm just going to list the directory and you'll see that we did get that downloaded. Now I'm going to run bash space security hyphen tools. Go ahead and press return and we'll give that just a few minutes to install. Uh, if you're doing it on build a -Pi, on top of build a -Pi, it's going to run a little bit faster. Maybe you may already have Java installed on your system, depending on uh, what, uh, what you included with build a -Pi to begin with. I'm running this on a base uh, build of Buster, so I don't have anything installed on it. Uh, just to make sure that I don't leave any dependencies out when we're doing this. But give this just a couple of minutes to install, and I'll be right back with you guys. Okay, now that that's finished up, let's just go ahead and clear the screen. And I'm going to move back to the home directory with uh, just a CD command. Now, again, if you're running build a -Pi, uh, it's going to be a little bit different than if you're not running build a -Pi. Uh, and it's just the way the path is set up during the build a -Pi installation. Uh, so I'm going to show it both ways. If you're not running build a -Pi, you'll need to go ahead and move into the bin directory. So from your home directory, it'll be uh, cd space bin, B-I-N. And we'll list that out. The main one we're looking at there is uh, the secure file. To start it, we'll run dot forward slash secure, whoop, can't spell, secure file. Now, if you are running build a -Pi, you can leave the dot forward slash off and you can run secure file from anywhere uh, on the turn or in the terminal. You don't have to be in this specific directory, but if you're not uh, running build a -Pi, you will need to be in this specific directory in order to start the application. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter there. We'll give it just a second to open up. While I'm waiting on that, I'm going to move that terminal out of the way. Now, I went ahead and created an example folder here and put uh, a few different types of files in it. So I've got a couple of images in it, a couple of PDFs, and a basic text file. 
So the way this works is, and I'm going to click the show hide password. Uh, if you click this and you got a check mark there, you only have to put the password in once. If it's unchecked, it'll make you put it in twice because it uh, puts dots there instead of the actual characters you're typing. But let's click on that and say password. That's real secure, right? Please choose a better one than that. All right, after you've typed in the password, you can also come right over here and choose different types of encryption. I'm just going to leave this default. Whatever you encrypt it with, you're going to need to decrypt it with, so you will have to remember that. Uh, so I'm gonna just leave it at the default. I've got the password in, and now I'm just gonna simply drop the folder, drag and drop that folder in there, and it'll tell you that it's processing. Now it does take it just a couple of seconds to process. Once it finishes up, it should give us a completed OK um, feedback there. So now you can go ahead and take the original folder and just put it in the trash basket. And I'll go ahead and empty that as well. Now we're left with this file right here, this example.enc. Uh, so if you wanted to decrypt that, in fact, let's close this out and I'll show you this from scratch. So let me reopen that uh, terminal window and rerun that last command. And we'll show you how this works. It's just as easy to decrypt it as it was to encrypt it. Uh, again, you've got to choose the right algorithm. And guys, this is one thing about this application. You have to put the password in first before you drag, uh, drag and drop files in. Whether you're encrypting it or whether you're decrypting it, you got to put the password in first. So let me go ahead and get in that really hard password that I made up a while ago. And now I'm going to take this uh, example.enc file and just drop it right back into that large window. Again, we're going to get uh, the processing uh, feedback there. It'll take it a couple of seconds and then it'll tell us OK. Once it says OK, you notice that the example folder has popped back up on our desktop. So I can go ahead and open that and click on one of the things in it. It'll bring up uh, that really cool image that I put in there as a sample. It would also bring up the other documents as well. So there's a way that if you want to store maybe some sort of sensitive data on your Raspberry Pi and you don't want it sitting out there in the clear, this is a good application to run to encrypt some of that data. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.